On today's episode of What's Going On with Shipping, an update on the offload of the car carrier Fremantle Highway in Aimshaven. Hi, I'm your host, Sal Mercagliano. Welcome to today's video. So a lot of interest in the fate of the Fremantle Highway and the vehicles that are on board. As you know, this vehicle, this car carrier has gotten a lot of attention because of the potential of EVs fires on board the ship. Let me be clear, the CEO of Smith Bus Callis, the, the salvage company that oversaw this, had a statement where he said that 2,700 cars were burnt up in the upper decks, but there were about a thousand or so cars in the lower decks, and about half of them were EV. He did not outlaw or rule out the potential for EVs being in the upper decks. And a lot of people have jumped on that statement saying that no EVs were involved whatsoever. What I want to show you is some videos of the offload going on, and it really highlights the danger of electrical vehicles on board a ship. Again, we will not know what caused this fire until the investigation is done. But what we do know is that cars on board car carriers are extremely dangerous and electrical vehicles pose a unique danger to car carriers. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. All right, let's jump into this. So here's the videos. This is from the local Ames Haven uh, TV station, I believe. It's on their YouTube channel, and I'll have a link to the, to the original videos. So you can see it. You can see the burnt out nature of the vessel on the upper decks. Remember, this vessel burned from deck five and above. There was a natural fire break across the vessel. You saw the crews coming out with full PPE, personal protective equipment on, air masks, they're breathing. What you see here is they're loading the equipment to decontaminate the vehicles. So they're bringing on board uh, water tanks or areas where they can fill with water, pumps and washing facilities and ways to reclaim the water so that they can decontaminate the vehicles from all the carcinogens and contaminants that have been on the cars since they've been in the vessel, even though the vehicles you're seeing are being pulled from the lower decks, deck one to four, you still have smoke damage. You still have a lot of areas where these vehicles have been contaminated. Uh, you see them moving these barriers into place. Uh, a lot of debate about these barriers. I raised that they put these barriers in here. Uh, I'm not sure they're blocking view as much as they're being put up to contain the vehicle should something happen. This is an area where the vehicle is going to be offloaded behind these barriers between the barriers and the ship so that you have a separation between them. Again, it could be because of a restart or a fire, so fire doesn't spread. We don't know. We just know they're doing it. The offload of vehicles is going to be really unique. Some vehicles are going to be driven off under their own engines. I believe they're internal combustion engines, the ones you see driven off. And and then some of them are going to be towed off. What you're seeing right here is the washing facility. They've got that washing facility set up. You see everybody in their personal protective gear because the water is dissipating uh, uh, material. You don't want to breathe it in, get it on you. So they're in full per personal protective equipment. They're gathering that water, reclaiming it. You see those areas, those tanks here where they're kind of either gathering the water and reclaiming it. And then the vehicles will be taken off driven off or towed off and stowed in this area behind those containers. Here you see a vehicle coming off. It looks like a BMW. I am not a car expert by any means. I'm sure there are people who can identify exactly the make and model of these cars. Uh, I know Mercedes, BMW is coming off here. But the video I really want to show you is this next one. So this video dropped today, and it shows something that was a bit disturbing for me when we start talking about the danger of electrical vehicles on board car carriers. So this was filmed on 29 August, and again, you're seeing the process well underway here, decontaminating vehicles and getting them off. So right here, they're moving in a dump tank. This is basically a half-high container that's full of water. You see this uh, forklift coming in here. They're moving it in the position. There's a truck off to the left here. You can barely see some sort of water truck. I, I think it's going to be used to reclaim the uh, uh, used water, the contaminated water. So here is a vehicle that is brought to the ramp. It's not driven off. This vehicle is obviously much more damaged than other vehicles. You'll see how burnt it is. They probably have some sort of electric dolly or truck inside to move the vehicles. You would want an electrical vehicle for that because you don't want carbon dioxide emissions from the exhaust. So you're probably using an electrical dolly of some kind or push car or tow. I don't know. Uh, they really don't get an image here, but they're going to take this vehicle off. And what's really interesting about it is what they wind up doing with this vehicle. 
jumped ahead to here just a little bit because it was in the process of moving it. So here they are, really damaged vehicle. Uh, you can see how scorched it is and burned it is. It is going to go into that drop tank. They're actually going to submerge it. Now, one of the processes for fighting electrical vehicle fires for firefighters, I've been a firefighter for 20 years, we've talked about this in my fire department and in all the literature, is if it, at all possible, submerge electrical vehicles. So we're talking about 25 July. We're talking almost a month since this fire took place. Here they are submerging what is more than likely an, an electrical vehicle. Again, I don't know vehicles good enough to tell you that. But the reason I tell you I believe it's an electrical vehicle is, as you'll see here, they're going to submerge it in water. And what you're going to start seeing is smoke coming out of this thing. Uh, the vehicle will start to smoke and you can see the process that they are going to to deal with fire damaged cars. I can't think of any reason an internal combustion engine car would react the way this vehicle is reacting right now after a month. Here you can see the smoke coming off. You see them kind of evacuating the personnel away from the area to uh, get away from it while it is submerged so as not to breathe it in. You see the one person here is in full PPE with uh, air protection, breathing air. Uh, they're actually going to bring in more water to put into this tank to top it off. So again, this really highlights the danger of electrical vehicles, especially on board vessels, that here we are a month out from the fire and we're seeing one rekindle here uh, in a fire where we're seeing smoke, you see them adding water at this time. 2,700 cars burned on this and we know none of those cars are gonna be removed. The CEO of Smith Biscalis uh, had said that those cars are fused to the deck. A lot of them are, are heavily damaged, the decks are damaged. All they're getting out are the vehicles from the lower decks. Here, they're putting the next measure up. They're going to cover the vehicle with one of the fire tarps. These really heavy tarps needs four people to get them up here. Really difficult to manage. They're going to try to put this over the vehicle. Uh, not exactly sure why. I almost would let it, let it smoke and burn out. But they're trying to limit, the uh, obviously, the emissions at this time. But again, this is a month after this ship burned. And here this vehicle is... Uh, smoking, once again, really highlights the danger of these vehicles. Not sure if they tried to clean it inside and they started having problems. Here they're bringing additional tanks, probably to handle more of the EVs that are potentially damaged by fire. Again, not exactly. I am not a lithium-ion engineer by any means. I am a ship driver. I'm just talking about the danger for vessels. Thought it was a really interesting video and I thought I'd share it with you today. If you found this video interesting, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell. We talk about global shipping here. We talk about ships moving around the entire planet. And this is an example of what we cover. Subscribe and like, contribute to the channel. How do you do that? Well, you can hit that super thanks button down below or head on over to Patreon, become a monthly or yearly subscriber, leave a comment, share it across social media and give it a thumbs up. Until our next video, this is Sal,